Our film starts with a guy knocking on a woman's door. She answers and he proceeds to attack and stab her repeatedly. After she dies, he tells her she's sorry and then grabs two small vials and collects blood samples. He does some type of test on the blood and gets upset at the results. A woman comes in and then panics because apparently the woman is the wrong blood type for something. The woman then insists on being locked up and we find out she's a vampire and she begins to turn feral and loses it. Lock me up! Now! Okay. He ties her up in a bedroom and he walks away as we see her snarling and drooling. Next we head to what seems to be a theater for a play. A guy heads to the bathroom in an isolated area because the main one is closed and once again glasses guy comes in, stabs the guy to death, and then does a test on the blood. This time he's excited about the results. At least I think he is, his facial expressions aren't that clear. He looks to make sure no one is around, then slits the guy's wrist even though there should be tons of blood coming from all the knife wounds and probably be pulled out on the floor at this point and drains the blood into a container. For some reason he gets sick at this even though we've already established he does this kind of thing all the time and let's be real this is the least productive form of blood collection. We eventually find out that the girl and the guy have basically moved into the first victim's house. The girl's name is Rachel and she's a very sweet girl when she's not a drooling vampire. We then find that her father is looking for her. We see what looks to be PIs who are on the case and looking for her. The PIs ask Rachel's father if he believes in vampires. We then meet a guy named Jack. A blonde woman introduces him to a guy and a girl named Scott and Jody who are now assigned to him as his apprentices. With any scene involving Jack, we see that some people are following him. Jack is kind of a dick to the two and they continue to be very vague about what's going on when talking. The blonde woman then appears to them whose name we now know is Catherine. Catherine asks to speak to Jack alone where they have an even more vague conversation where we learn absolutely nothing that's going on. Back to Glasses Guy, we eventually find out through flashbacks that he and Rachel went to school together and he was a nerd that got picked on who she was nice to. We also find out that there is absolutely no reason for him to be doing the messy stabby stabby routine because she's willing to find her own blood but he's basically using this as an excuse to be close to her. Back to Jack, we see that he's starting to get real close to the bartender that gave him a book earlier in the film. We then see Catherine following him who made comments previously that Jack no longer loved her. At this point, we can start to piece together that there is or at some point was something between Jack and Catherine, but again, this film is very vague. Back with Rachel and Glasses Guy, she stays in the car after hyperventilating at the thought of stabbing someone, which shouldn't be an issue as she clearly has fangs and doesn't need to stab anyone. Glasses Guy tells her to stay in the car and he sneaks into some lady's house. While in there, a guy shows up, which makes Rachel panic enough to tell us his name is Jimmy. Anyway, Jimmy succeeds in stabbing the girl Jennifer to death, and when her date, who was there to meet her, begins to beat up Jimmy, Rachel shows up and basically eats him. Again, proving he's pointless. Through another flashback, we learn that Jimmy is really a major creep, with their backstory being that Rachel friendzoned him and he began stalking her. In doing so, he witnessed her get kidnapped and rescued her from a vampire cult. This then leads to the Jack story, where we learn that the job of Jack, Jody, and Scott is to maintain the victims of those the cults kidnapped for Catherine to feed on. Jack explains to Jody and Scott that Catherine is a vampire, and vampires can only feed on feral half-breed vampires, which anyone she bites turns into. The half-breeds can only feed on their own blood type. With this, we can finally piece together what's going on 49 minutes into the film. We then get Scott and Jody's backstory of Catherine saving them from a serial killer and taking them in, but now Jody won't talk after her mother wasn't so lucky. The last thing we see in this long exposition segment is Jody jumping when she witnesses Catherine feeding. Back to Jimmy and Rachel, she once again tries to make him go away in the nicest possible way. He completely ignores that though and has a temper tantrum about how things aren't going to plan and takes off. A neighbor notices someone she doesn't know leaving the house and comes looking for the last victim, Jennifer. Rachel answers the door and when Jimmy comes back later, he finds the neighbor dead in the bathroom and Rachel had fed on her. Back at Rachel's father's place, he also gets the backstory of everything from a hunter. 
The only additional info we get during this segment is that Catherine and her people are looking for Rachel to kill her. Her father wants to make sure this doesn't happen. That's right, after an hour in, we finally have the plot. Rachel and Jimmy are now in a car looking for a new place to go. Rachel, looking very zombie-like, explains to Jimmy that she now has the ability to find the blood she needs and that she is always hungry. Again, he pretty much ignores anything she's saying and how creepy she's becoming and instead uses her hunger as an excuse to hold hands to act like a couple. We see their next planned victim is the bartender that Jack was seeing. Coincidentally, at Catherine, she tells Jack that once they finally take care of Rachel, they will discuss the life he wants to live as she doesn't consider him a slave. Jack then shows up at the bartender's house for a date that they made to see each other, but Rachel and Jimmy have already made themselves comfortable. They've left the door open, so Jack lets himself in. He looks around and finds Rachel's wine glass full of blood on the table. That's when Jimmy jumps him from behind and strangles him. While this is happening, Catherine, after dealing with a vampire hunter, senses he's in danger. After Jack's death, one of the guys Rachel's father sent to find her comes in looking for her. Jimmy goes to protect her and ends up getting shot. A hungry Rachel then fangs out and attacks the guy. <laughs> Rachel then goes home covered in blood. She's basically unresponsive other than zeroing in on the PI when she realizes his blood type matches hers. She fangs out and pounces him. You're on negative, aren't you? Her father, seeing what she's become, goes to his study and grabs a gun. After thinking about it, he instead calls Catherine, who then arrives with Scott and Jody. We see Rachel snarl at Catherine, followed by Catherine wiggling her fingers at her. But what actually happens to her is unknown. Scott sits her father down and tells her her suffering is over, and the film ends with Jody finally speaking, telling Rachel's father things will be fine. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe, and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. If you want to help my channel grow, Please check out my Patreon, where you can get access to content early, as well as see the content that can't be uploaded here on YouTube. Link will be in the description. Until next time.